Welcome to the Cathedral Church of Christ the King, commonly referred to as Christ Church Cathedral. Since its dedication on the Feast of St. James in 1884, the Cathedral has exercised a special role in Grafton and the Anglican Diocese of Grafton, whose parishes, schools and other agencies serve communities throughout the northern rivers of New South Wales. The cathedral stands on the traditional lands of the Bundjalung Nation. We acknowledge and pay our respect to their elders, past, present and emerging, as well as to indigenous people who may be with us today. We seek the peace and well-being of our nation and especially our local community. Our dean is on annual leave and today we welcome as our president the Reverend Canon Zoe Everingham a member of our cathedral chapter. We will share worship from a prayer book of Australia, for us, of Australia and the copy of today's service can be downloaded from the Grafton Cathedral website on the This Sunday page. We're delighted that you are here either in person or online and invite you all to share in the worship this morning in a COVID safe way. Today's theme for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost is love, and we begin the service with the introit, I give you a new commandment. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, almighty and everlasting God, give to us the increase of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us to love what you command, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit for the scripture readings. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. 
And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea and the Negeb and the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zor. The Lord said to him, this is the land to which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his, his hands on him and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequal for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land. And for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed, in the sight of all Israel. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please sit. Well, I think I drew the long straw today. I feel very privileged to be talking about my favorite subject, love. Oh, if only the world danced to the tune of love. Marriage would end in happy ever after, rather than divorce. Children would grow up fulfilled and stable, rather than angry or abused. And the global expenditure on war or terrorism might even be spent on feeding the hungry and housing the homeless. Now, I know this sounds like a pipe dream because it depends on humans learning to overcome their basic weaknesses, selfishness and anger. Which reminds me of this delightful domestic story and I'm sure many of us can relate to this. A married couple had been arguing when the husband jumped up from the table grabbed two sheets of paper and said to his wife, let's make a list of everything we don't like about each other. The wife started writing. The husband glowered at her for a few minutes and then he wrote on his paper. She wrote again. He watched her and every time she stopped, he would start writing again. It was like fighting deer locking horns. They finally finished. Let's exchange complaints, Dad said. They gave each other their lists. Give mine back, the wife pleaded when she glanced at 
his sheet. All down the page he had written, I love you, I love you, I love you. Now, your arguments always end like that, don't they? So what kind of love can disarm or even um, disarm hatred or even murderous intent? What kind of love can stare death in the face in order to save someone else? Like a father running into a burning building to save their child. A deep-seated spiritual love at the very center of human existence that transcends petty likes and dislikes, discrimination and persecution. Instead, that deep-seated spiritual love, that peace of God placed in the center of every human being, that love offers forgiveness and reconciliation. The kind of love that God has for us. And if we reciprocate that love, the kind of love we are called to share with others. In the gospel according to a Jewish Matthew, when the Pharisees try to trick Jesus, he responds, with a provocative answer. A scribe of the holy law poses a common question. Which commandment in the law is the greatest, he asks. Now, there are 613 precepts of Jewish law, so if any of you think it's hard to remember 10, congratulate our Jewish brothers and sisters who remember 613 precepts. And it was common for rabbis to provide a summary for their students. Predating Jesus, the Talmud, a collection of Jewish scriptures and commentaries, recorded an answer from Rabbi Hillel. Now, Rabbi Hillel lived from approximately 110 BCE, before the Common Era, before Christ, to about 10 CE. And it was known as the golden rule. What is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. That is the whole Torah. The rest is commentary. Go and learn it. The response from Jesus quotes Deuteronomy You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. This is the greatest and first commandment. No one could contest that answer. But that is not all. Jesus says a second commandment carries equal weight and quotes Leviticus. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. All the writings of the law and all the writings of the prophets are underpinned by these two commandments. They identify religion of the heart. Nothing in scripture can cohere or be truly obeyed unless these two are observed. Although the pairing of these two commandments did not, did not originate with Jesus, why did he consider them equally important? Because we can't acknowledge we receive God's merciful love and love God in return with our whole heart and our whole mind and our whole strength and then not love our neighbor as ourselves. To not love our neighbor is a complete denial of the love of God. When we hear it like that, it puts our pettiness in perspective, doesn't it? When 
we receive that love and mercy, how can we not share that? How can we not turn our disagreements into statements of love? I love you, I love you, I love you. And how do we love our neighbor? God shows mercy, we receive mercy, we need to show mercy to others. God provides, we need to provide for others. God forgives, we receive forgiveness, we need to forgive others. That doesn't mean it's an easy path, but it's something we are called to practice until it becomes as natural within us as our love of God. Jesus also illustrated this call to action in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us as we forgive others. In other words, give your neighbor the consideration you would like to receive in their situation. Give a neighbor's interests and rights the respect you give your own. In our church, we not only live this out in our social justice engagement, but this golden rule of Jesus also informs our behavior in community through faithfulness in service, code of conduct, and the summary document, being together. If only we could remember this slogan, claiming the love of God only makes sense if we are living out that love. In the second half of the gospel reading today, Jesus has a provocative question for the Pharisees. He turns the tables. They have been asking him tricky questions to trip him up. Now he asks them a question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? In response to their answer, which was a common answer, the son of David, Jesus quotes from one of the Psalms. Now, traditionally, Psalm 110, as with most of the Psalms, was thought to have been written by David. And Psalm 110, verse 1 says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. If David calls the Messiah Lord, how can the Messiah be David's son? Here's a great riddle for a Sunday morning. Now, this is not to deny Jesus as descending from David's line, because that is a statement that occurs very often in the New Testament. Maybe... It is a comment that draws us to reflect on the kind of king the Messiah will be. Maybe the Messiah won't necessarily encapsulate the glory days of the Davidic monarchy, of King David, when national boundaries were expanded by fierce battles, where others' lands were grabbed on the contrary, Jesus as Messiah rules not by military prowess, but by love, and expects God's love to be lived out in the lives of his followers. Matthew, whose writing style criticizes the Jewish leaders for rejecting Jesus, records Jesus saying to the crowds, the scribes and Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. In other words, they know all the law, but do not do 
as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. The difficult question for us today is, are we like that? Do we profess to love God but do little to show it? Could onlookers confidently say of us, do as they do? This is our challenging reflection for the week. In what social justice activities do we participate? How do we behave around people we may not initially like? With judgment or with mercy? With criticism or with affirmation? In our family arguments, do we show anger? Do we give anger for anger? Or do we respond with love? It is important we are brutally honest in our reflections to avoid living hypocritical lives. Claiming the love of God only makes sense if we are living out that love. Let us pray. We give thanks, Lord, for the many blessings in our lives. We love you. Help us to live out your love in our daily interactions. Help us to show mercy in our dealings with others so that your presence may be visible throughout our world. Amen. Please stand as we together affirm the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we pray for the world and for the church.
Let us pray to the Father who invites all men and women to receive and give his love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Grant that your people, entrusted with the message of this gospel and called by grace, shall be worthy of their calling. We pray for Murray, our bishop, Greg, our dean, Tiffany, our diocesan archdeacon, and all priests in our parishes. Keep your people faithful, pure, upright, and blameless as they care for others, as they would themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let the whole world hear your call. Come to those who turn away and gather them into the great feast of your love. When the world suffers and is divided through the ravages of COVID-19 pandemic, help all people to remember your love so that they care for neighbours as themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reconcile those in our community who are at variance with each other Draw us, our families and neighbours into the peace that is beyond our understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of COVID-19, we pray that the compassion of Christ will prevail to heal the sick and help those in need through the divine love that never fails. Be close to those we love and hear the prayers of those who ask especially. Sue Cotter, Brian Holly, John McAnally, Euro Shepherd, and those known only to you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Grant your peace to the faithful department. Remember those whose year's mind occurs this week. Royce Lee, Janet Cumberland, Norma Oxenford, Meg Imerson, Jeremy Chalicum, Sue Chalicum. Ron Brotherson, Shirley Whitford, and those carried in our hearts. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let perpetual shine upon them. We pray as those who seek to be worthy guests of the Lord, who has called us to love our neighbour as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray the cathedral prayer together. Living and eternal Christ, bless the ministry of this cathedral as a place of pilgrimage and prayer. May our doors always be open to pilgrims. May our hearts always be open to one another. And may our minds always be open to new truth. For us deeply into the mystery of your life, your death, and your resurrection, now and always. Amen. Friends, happy are they who are called to the banquet. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share a sign of God's peace without touching one another.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ, Christ has, has died. died, Christ, Christ is, is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise, blessing and honour and glory and power 
are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God, holy things for holy people, broken things for broken people, come.
minutes notices time. We have some birthdays this week. On the 28th of October, Shirley Graham. And on the 29th of October, Magna Matarad and Judith Gilkinson. So, and we say thank you, Reverend Canon Zoe, for presiding this morning. It's always a pleasure to welcome you to your cathedral and to share worship with you. Next Sunday is the 1st of November, All Saints and All Souls. On the first Sunday in November, we shall be observing the twin holy days of All Saints and All Souls. As is our custom, during the service, we will be remembering in prayer all those whose funerals have been taken by cathedral clergy, as well as others whose family have asked us to remember them at this time. If you have people whose names you wish to have included in these prayers, please call Roger in the parish office no later than Wednesday morning. Now, it could be that there's no one answering the phone, but please leave a message. Work on the organ is continuing and the chapel roof is finished. We've only got a little bit of mess to clean up. Tuesday, after school, Cathedral Kids Club continues on the school campus and the youth group meets on alternate Fridays. Next Sunday, I think, I've got my dates mixed up, the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost and is set aside for the Defence Forces of Australia. And we remember in particular Defence Force chaplains and I will be presiding and preaching at that service. So as I said earlier, the Dean is on vacation for the next three weeks. Hopefully he really has turned his phone off and that the border restrictions will be lifted and he can catch up with his family. On Wednesday this week, we have the usual 10 a.m. Eucharist. Bountiful God, at this table you graciously feed us with the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. May we who have reached out our hands to receive this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises tell of your glory and truth in our lives. We who have seen the greatness of your love see you face to face in your kingdom and come to worship you with all your saints forever. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.